earlier and earlier. A couple more thoughts here for us. Of course, we must also teach the consequences of improper sexuality, and at the top of that list must be pornography. In addition to teaching our young people about the spiritual consequences of pornography, we must also start to teach them very directly about the myths and miseducation they receive when they view pornography. Pornography always operates on a myth. It can only be an arousing media if we buy in to the myth. It's a little bit like watching Star Wars and somebody is sitting there next to you going, oh, that could never happen. That could never happen. That could never happen, right? And you finally just like, hey, shh, I know this isn't reality. I'm trying to suspend reality to engage in the fantasy, right? Pornography is exactly the same. If you see the image that is presented for what it really is, there's nothing arousing about it. This is why one of the common uh, practices and patterns we see in therapy around this is to help those in recovery break down those images for what they really are. This individual you see, what do you think she was doing five minutes before this photo shoot? What will she be doing five minutes after? If this camera was to spin around, what else do you think you would see? Replace the person in the image with somebody you know. Now how would you see it? If that's your sister, if that's your friend, if that's the person you grew up with, oh, the fantasy's gone. Now it's real. It's a real person. We can't objectify them. We can't engage in that false distortion that's required there. But we also have to understand that right now, pornography is acting as one of the great sex educators in our culture today. The young people are learning what they believe to be an understanding of human sexuality. The problem is, as a report that just came out from the Witherspoon Institute says, pornography is non-normative people engaging in non-normative acts. How can that be a foundation for teaching about healthy sexuality? So the sexual conditioning and scripts that are embedded here, this requires many of us to have an understanding of pornography at levels that are beyond our comfort level. But to understand those messages and to understand what is being taught, the sexual fragmentation, the objectification, the unrealistic expectations. A new study just a few years ago found that men who use pornography have greater struggles with body image issues. Yes, ladies, we have finally found something that the men can start to share in the body image issues. Because as they see representations of the male body, non-normative, then they start to worry and they start to be concerned. Am I healthy? Am I normal? Do I look the way I'm supposed to look? These become the messages that they have. And of course, in this, we must teach the reality of addiction and the understanding that we are having that this is not just a metaphorical form of addiction, as we use that term. This is real, biological, brain-based addiction, altering the pleasure centers of the brain, the thermostat that is there, so to speak, of the dopamine production, the receptors of that, and help understand that real addictive potential and possibility that is there. But of course, in this as well, we must teach the normalization of struggle. Far too often, this is becoming the independent, the alone part of people's faith and efforts at discipleship. It's not talked about with parents or with others. There's not examples to follow. There's not a sense of how that's happened for others. And so many young people talk about this to me as being an area that they were just left kind of alone to try to figure out, to try to discover. And there is an area of struggle, particularly in our day and age today. So how do we teach the seriousness, of course, and the importance of this, but also in many ways the normalization that we can talk and share with young people the struggle they may have as they learn to learn and conform and move in patterns that will help them be healthy. This will keep open the lines of dialogue and discussion rather than close them down. And then we must teach, of course, the benefits of sexual restraint and avoiding pornography and other forms of improper sexual expression. 
teaching healthy patterns of dating, coupling, and marriage. Right now, we oftentimes don't emphasize the stages that are needed through this. Integrated views around sexuality and spirituality. My colleague Dean Busby and I recently published a study and have spent far too much time with the media than we ever intended on this one uh, recently, demonstrating that couples who abstain from sex before their marriages have better marriages. They have better sexual quality in their marriages. Counteracting the myth of our day of a sexual chemistry theory, sexual compatibility theory. You better test that out before you move forward. It's kind of a test drive type of idea. The data has shown that not to be the case. So to understand these things and to see these patterns and help them see what is so positive, can be so healthy, so proper in their expression of sexuality, this good and enriching and ennobling part of their lives in ways